And so I go back to college, um, back to campus, and the athletic director calls me in, and he tells me that he got a letter from the NCAA and that the surgeon submitted a request for a medical release. And it literally took that to wake me up to realize that my playing days were last week. And I had nothing else. I had nothing else. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted. Because all I knew was that I was an athlete, I was successful, and I was going to play four years. That's it. Now, I went through depression, anxiety, physical consequences, crazy stress vibes. I mean, I had it all. But I hit it. Because athletes have to be strong. And athletes can't be sad. They can't cry. So that season that I didn't finish, I would have to sit on the bench, and I would have to watch, and I would be squeezing my jaw so tight to not cry, I would get blackout migraines where I couldn't see out of my eye, and I would run home so that no one could see me do this. And I would come back and I'd tell the doctor, the sports doctor we had, you know, I have headaches, I'm not feeling well, my stomach hurts, I'm not sleeping, I get hives at night, they just kept loading me up with ibuprofen and steroids, just keep fixing the symptoms. And what changed my life was this one thing that is a blessing in a curse. I need to be busy all the time. Athletes need to be busy all the time. So I found something to fill my schedule. I was interested in psychology, so I went to Lurie's Memorial Hospital in Chicago when it was down in Lincoln Park, and I volunteered in their children's psychiatric department. And I saw what a social worker does in LCSW, and that's what I am now. And I saw how she talked to the kids. I saw how everyone was working, and I thought, I need to talk to her. And I didn't know about her, so I asked her if she would be my therapist, and she said, that's not how it works. But I found a therapist. I sat down with someone, and I talked through everything. And I was not equipped emotionally or mentally to be a college athlete because I had no backup plan. I had no concept of who I was or what I was beyond the sport. And so I want to tell everyone here today is that you need to play like it's your last day, because it can be. And you need to develop yourself beyond the sport so you have a backup plan. Because you don't know what tomorrow is, but you always have your education, you have your academics, you have your life experience, you have your family, and you can't fill your whole bucket up with confidence of winning and losing, of being an athlete. Because if that's all you're writing on, and that gets taken away from you, then what's left? And so the mental and the emotional strength that you have to have as an athlete is the self-care and is the mental health. Because physically, you can train. But mentally and emotionally, are you training? And I'm going to guess that a lot of you are not training mentally and emotionally. And there's programs out there that do help you do that. And you can go and search online, and you can find, for example, that NCAA has a book that I can send to the staff here, and it's called Mind Body for the Athlete. That would be a great book to start, to read and understand. There's other things out there that you can start to do, too. You can watch YouTube videos on mindset training, YouTube videos on athletes talking about their mental health, there is Michael Phelps out there who's talking a lot about his mental health. You can be inspired to get inquisitive about your own emotions and your own mental care beyond the physical because you've got to set yourself up for college in a successful way. So I don't have a one quick tip. I don't have a magic pill. I don't have a golden ticket that's going to tell you this is how you're mentally and emotionally strong because that really takes a one-on-one -on -one or a group conversation that can't be preached and learned in a setting like this. But what you can do is start to consider that your mental and your emotional capacity is more important than your physical capacity. Because if you're able to control your emotions and your mind and feel confident internally, your performance will take care of itself. And unfortunately, as athletes, we put the other one in front. We think if we're physically capable, then the rest of it doesn't matter. And I'm here to kind of tell you that's not true. If you need help, you should always go to your athletic trainer 
because they are mandated to seek help for you. Your coach may or may not have your best mental and emotional interest, but your trainer or your head doc or someone in the medical field is required by ethics and training to have your best interest beyond your performance on the court. And they're your ally, and you need to rely on them and be honest with them. If you're suffering inside, if you're not telling people what's going on, they can't read your mind. And you have to be your own advocate, and you have to communicate your pain, your anxiety, your fears. You have to communicate that. That doesn't make you weak. That makes you really strong, because a lot of people can't do that. 